My name is Mr. Jimmy and I am so glad that you're here. After all, I am a super fan of each and every single one of you. It's true, this month we're talking about how we can show other people kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. It's important for us to cheer each other on. It's important for us to let other people know that they matter with our words and with our actions. But that brings up an interesting question. Exactly how kind do we have to be? We'll find out a little bit later when we take a look at something Jesus said. But first, let's worship. Got a rhythm in my heart and in my soul. Got a reason for this joy I can't control. I want to sing. love I know This week we head to the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 41. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught, suppose someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with them. To us, that might sound strange, but to those listening, not so much. Roman soldiers could force them to carry their pack for a full mile. Jesus reminds his followers to go above and beyond in how they respond to others. Super fans, my name is Haley, and if you're like me, you love all kinds of sports! And you love cheering on your favorite people. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. And 
you do this? Because you really love kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. One thing I've learned as a super fan is that kindness isn't the same for everyone. You have to use different kinds of cheering for different kinds of people. For instance, you don't want to use your air horn at the golf tournament. Uh, I learned that one the hard way. You have to cheer one way for a baseball team. Yeah. Another way for tennis and then soccer and even racing a lot of different ways to show kindness so if you want to show someone they're valuable you can cheer for them or like you'll see in today's story you can give a little extra i better get ready to cheer on the bible story ah yes good bible story very well done the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 41. Jesus was rocking the world. Everywhere he traveled, he told about the good news of God's kingdom. He called people to turn away from the wrong things they had done, and he healed sick people. Great crowds began to follow Jesus. So one day, he went up on a mountainside and sat down to share with them how God wants us to live. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. God created us. He knows that we were designed to find joy and be at peace when we follow His ways, when we see and treat others the way God does. So, right in the middle of what's often called the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Okay. What? <laughs> to our ears, this probably sounds like a word problem, or maybe like our PE teacher telling us to go run laps. But the people listening to Jesus knew exactly what he meant. They all lived under the rule of the Caesar in Rome. The Romans had conquered many, many territories. Judea had become a little backwater province of the Roman Empire, and Roman soldiers were sent to keep order. Jesus and all the people he taught lived under Roman rule, and they had to obey the law of Rome, including this one. I decree that any Roman soldier may force a Jew to carry his pack for precisely one mile. If you're thinking, what's the big deal? Think again. Being a Roman soldier was not for wimps. Sometimes the packs they carried weighed as much as 100 pounds. It took real grit and stamina to march for miles carrying that much gear. So it wasn't unusual for a soldier to call on some random person along the road to haul their pack for one mile or about a thousand steps. And if that person says no, well, it was considered an act of rebellion against the empire. Now, imagine you're an everyday, ordinary average Joe or Joseph. You're hiking along the road, maybe you're on your way to Jerusalem. When you look up and in the distance, you see a Roman soldier heading your way. I don't know about you, but I think I'd turn right around and head back the other way or get off the road and head into a grove of olive trees or maybe just avoid eye contact at all costs. But maybe none of that works. The soldier stops calls you out and you have no choice but to look up. The soldier orders you to take his heavy pack and haul it along for a whole mile. You can't fight the empire. So you pick up the pack and it's forward march. You're probably counting your steps the whole way. 58, 
59. Just waiting until you can drop that pack. 681, 682. Holding out until you can get away from this soldier that sees you as scum. 998, 999, 1000. <gasps> That's it. You're free. Roman law says that that soldier can't make you go more than one mile. So you can toss that pack like it's hot and run on home. <laughs> Except, Jesus says something else. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. You had to carry that pack the first mile. You didn't have a choice. But now you get to choose. And if you choose to take that pack another mile, it says a lot. It says, I matter. I'm valuable just like you, and I can make my own choices. But it also says you matter. This is a really heavy load you have to carry. And I'm gonna help you not because I have to, but because I choose to. Go the extra mile doesn't just mean go big or go home. Going the extra mile means that you make a choice to help someone, to be kind. You choose an action that says, I'm doing this for you because I want to, not because I have to. And I'm doing this because you are made in the image of God. And that makes you valuable to Him and to me. So, you may not live in an empire, but you can still go the extra mile. Jesus' disciple, Matthew, wrote down one of Jesus' most famous sermons, sometimes called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught so many things about kindness, like... Let your light shine so others can see it! Woo! Do not judge other people. And Jesus also said this, suppose someone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with them. That's where we get the phrase, go the extra mile. Huh. Nowadays, people probably aren't forcing you to go a mile, but the idea of what Jesus was saying still works. Going the extra mile means being kinder than you have to be. It means making your bed like you're told and cleaning the rest of your room even if you aren't told. Sometimes it means doing something you know you should before you're told and with a good attitude, but you don't do it for the applause. You go the extra mile because when you follow Jesus, you should be pointing people to him. People can see how much Jesus loves them through the kindness that you show. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be kinder than you have to be. Show people kindness even when they may not earn it. Give them a little extra kindness they don't see coming. You can be their super fan! I did not see that coming. Goodbye, everybody! <laughs> Woo! We can show people that they're valuable by treating them with kindness maybe when they don't even expect it. Don't just be nice to people because you have to. Make a choice. Be kinder than you have to be. Say that with me. Be kinder than you have to be. Great. If you're wondering how to do that, just remember what we always say here at Park Valley. I should treat others the way that I want to be treated. Let's ask God to give us the strength and the conviction to go the extra mile. Dear God, thank you for always being kinder than you have to be. You give us the ultimate example of kindness when you sent Jesus to be our Savior. Help us follow your lead and show kindness to others, even when it's hard and even when we don't want to. Help us be kinder than we have to be. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget to work on our memory verse. Colossians 3.12, you are God's chosen people, you are holy and dearly loved, and so put it on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes.
Do not be proud, but be gentle and patient. You can head to the Park Valley Church website for some great activities to help you and your adult continue the discussion about how we can be kinder than we have to be. Here's one more video, and I hope to see you next time. snack bar, a good word of the month at school, a great catchphrase for a t-shirt. Kindness can be all those things, but it can't stop there. Kindness isn't something you wear on the outside. It's what comes from the inside. Kindness chooses to slow down and see the value in someone else, even if you are upset, tired, or in a hurry. Kindness chooses to treat everyone like they're made in the image of God, even if they're different, overlooked, or unloving. See, when you choose kindness, you choose your words wisely. I can't believe you did that! Ah! I'm sorry you had a rough day. How can I help? When you choose kindness, you offer it to everyone, from your family and friends to that grouchy old neighbor and that kid at school you can't stand. When you choose kindness, others see the love of God shining through you. That's why kindness is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all 